All right, what's going on, guys? People Pizza here, back again with another video. Today we got Adonis. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Man United enthusiast, <laughs> uh, also known as the Choker Club. Yeah. And today we're gonna be doing an overrated, underrated series. This is part one. I'm gonna be hoping to bring on more people, but Adonis is our guinea pig for this today, and let's see how it goes. So let's get straight into it. Sweet. All right, all right, Adonis. First one. I know this is gonna be a little sensitive topic for you right. but uh daniel james underrated Ooh. overrated you see personally i don't rate him so i'm gonna have to say overrated just because i don't personally i don't think he's good enough to be at man united all right all right all right here here, here. i know we'll, we'll probably do like a back and forth type of thing but let me ask another one because i want to know your input on oh, this sure. one especially after like two weeks ago porto fc Ooh. i think they're sleepers yeah? Yeah, I think Portos are sleepers. I honestly, I underestimated them against Juve. But then Pepe is just solid at the <laughs> back, bro. He doesn't... Bro, I didn't know he was 38. Or 39. Yep. Or how he aged, he's he? aging just like wine. All right, you got one for me? Yeah, let's see. Since I know you're a, a Dortmund fan, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to say, what's Giovanni Reina's ceiling? Oh, well... Right now, I think he might be a little overrated, just with all the hype from the U United States mm -hmm. uh, national team. But I would say that his work ethic is actually paying off. But he is, he's a little overrated right now, just because of all yeah. the media. All the media. But to be honest, he's, he's putting in the work, so he's, he's, he's pretty balanced. I, I feel like the media is starting to do that with all these, all these young players. That's what I'm saying. All right, the next player I got for you is Sadio Mane. Overrated or underrated? I was going to put him on the list for you. Um... Jeez. I think he's balanced. Really? Yeah, because he's good. Right now, Liverpool's not good. Uh, the whole team is not good, but he's still kind of putting in work. And he's always putting in work, but he kind of started small. You know, like he rose his way up from yeah. Southampton. Um, he started in the French League and then Southampton, and then um, I forgot where else. I think maybe straight to Liverpool. But I think he's really, he's a, he's a really good guy, so I would I say balanced. I think he's a balanced player, but I think his price tag is, over, is way what, too what high. What is it? Like 100 mil, 110 mil. You think that's too high? I think that's too high. Last season, for his his uh, performance last season, the past two seasons? I mean, if we're talking about current market, what has he done this season? Okay, current market, alright, yeah. you got me, you got me, you got me. Harry Kane. He's having a wonderful season, but... The flop in Europe, I think, is for sure underperforming. Or yeah. at least Spurs are underperforming. Harry Kane is having a great season in terms of leagues, uh, in terms of the league, the, the, the goals and the assists, but in Europe, they're underperforming. All right, now you go. Gundogan. Oh, that was a good one. Nope. Underrated. Okay. Underrated. 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 He's because underrated. I used to love him at Dortmund. He was a tank at yeah. Dortmund. And then he went to Man City, didn't really perform too well. And then just this season, dude, a midfielder. Yeah. He has the most goals on City. No? Uh, I think in 2021, yeah. In 2021, yeah. In 2021, he has the most Kevin goals. Kevin De Bruyne's uh, injury helped them flourish at oh Man City again. Yeah. And I don't even know. I don't even know what he, yeah. he was like a center defensive mid at first, and then mm -hmm. a center mid. Now he's playing like a center attacking mid. He's always in the box. Yeah, so. and I think another reason why is because since Sergio Aguero got injured, Man City had to change the formation. Yeah. So they either had to play with more midfielders or a false nine. And so I feel like Il Kai Gundogan is uh, is filling in those spots. All right, now that you said Aguero, how about him? Scored his first league goal like, what last week or so? Did he? Or a couple weeks ago? Yeah, first league goal since. January 2020, so it's been a while, but I think he's he's gonna move to Barcelona, so we'll see what happens. But I think he's still on. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> right, rumor reports. Yeah. Um, no, but I think I think Sergio Aguero is still sw solid. He just needs to get his fitness back up. All right. Uh, oh, you go, you yeah. go. Because I asked you about it. Uh, yeah. So since I'm a big Man U fan, I'm gonna have to ask you this: Bruno Fernandez. Oh, I had it on here. Um. What do you think about it? Because at first, okay, at first, at first, I thought he was underrated when he was at Sporting. He joined Man United. He was yeah. whatever, and then he just like I thought he was overrated. But then if you start to think about it, I think he's properly rated because he does get a lot of media attention. Yeah, and he's like up there with everyone, you know, the best midfielder in the world right now. But his his work ethic and his uh, stats are, are proving it. So balance. Would you rank him as one of the top three midfielders in the world? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. This one's kind of a sleeper. Um, Trossard from Brighton? I think 
he was flourishing last season and right towards now the season, towards right? the end of the yeah. season and right now he's he's all right but he's not getting the media attention mm -hmm. so i would say underrated yeah underrated for sure all right i'm gonna tell you now psg the team I feel like it's the same thing every year with PSG. They just <laughs> always, I mean, last season they did pretty good in the Champions League. They, they lost in the finals. But I feel like as a, as a huge club as they are, as much money they bring in and invest into their team, they underperform. So I'm going to say they're overrated. Yep. All right. I thought I thought the same thing too. Yeah. Now, uh, let's see Juve. Oh, this is my boy, this is my boy or Eric. Or underrated? Um... They're honestly, right now, at this season, they are overrated. Um, I know they're Eric. Just, they're just underperforming. They're, well, that, that's what it is. They're just underperforming. I don't know what's going on with them. They have a solid, solid squad in every single position. Mm -hmm. They have a solid player and a backup player for yep. every position. I don't know what's going on. But then again, if you think about it, uh, Inter and AC Milan, they're tearing it up right now too. So they're bringing yeah. in the competition. Um, so it's not really all Juve's fault. Yeah. But I mean the against the Porto, league is a little more competitive yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah. and the, yeah. I mean in the Champions League, it's just that was just three years in a row now, though, right? Four, I think four, four years or three. Yeah. I think it's three. I said it last year. That they, yeah, that they got knocked out pretty early because mm -hmm. the first the the first year that CR Seven joined, they got knocked out by Ajax and the yes. uh, and what is it the quarters quarters and then it I was so. and then it was Leon. Oh yeah, last year yeah. and then this and then year, this year Porto. to Porto smaller. Smaller teams. Yeah, all right. Knows, maybe they struggle against smaller clubs. All right. All right. So since you asked me, now I'm gonna ask you, Ibrahimovic. He just got called out to the Swedish team, national team. So I think, I think what well, he is, I, I would say he's he's very balanced. But I think he his role in the team is a huge factor in AC Milan's success. I think underrated. I think yeah. I'm gonna lie you, but yeah. Uh, I guess that could go as, as underrated just because of the influence that he has on his team. Yep. All right, you go. Since we since you wanna keep it Italy, I'm gonna say Romelu Lukaku. I had him on the list. Um, uh, under. Well, actually, balance. He does get a lot of media attention, and he's banging goals left and right. But I just feel like he's not getting enough respect for it yep. so like, I, could like, agree, yeah. I, I feel like Benzema is getting way more respect than Lukaku mm -hmm. and over the past couple seasons Lukaku has been turning it up more than yeah. Benzema so I think that he might be like balanced if not or underrated yeah so I could agree yeah Lukaku is a he's a pretty slept on player even though he doesn't have the great, the best first touch. I think it's important that he was able to find a team like Inter Milan that you know kind of sits in and then just kind of counterattacks. Yeah, exactly. It fits his personality. Yes. All right, you ask now. I go. Joao Felix, see, young player. Back, yeah, going back to the young player. Yeah. See, that's another thing with this whole market is that if one young player has a stellar season, his market price just it just booms right and it's just like but then when they have a couple bad seasons his market price it decreases a little bit but not no anywhere near as as much as it uh increased but i'm gonna say he's overrated i say so right, I think, now. right now uh, who yeah. knows he may he might flourish later on but but i think right now the reason good. why i said he's overrated is because i mean who can really perform in that atletico madrid team they like terrible against chelsea you they know did, what i mean yeah, hats off to chelsea hats off to chelsea they played a you know they played two great legs they didn't allow Atletico Madrid to create many chances, but at the same time, like, who is Atletico Madrid is gonna create? Who are they gonna create chances against if they play like that? You know? And I don't know. I mean, I feel like Joao Felix since he got there, he just hasn't been the same player mm -hmm. that he was. Not so. at Benfica. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, two two completely different style of plays. You know? Yep. Now that you mentioned here, I'm I'm gonna skip you for this one. Now that you mentioned Chelsea, Thomas Tuchel, now like okay. so far since Chelsea. Obviously, he's obviously he's on. Yeah. He's unbeaten, but yeah, he's, I want I want to Um I think he's having a great run with Chelsea since joining, but honestly I think his uh his style of play is a little lethargic. You know, he likes to possess, he likes to pass the ball. A lot of his games have been, you know, one nil, two nil, even draws, but um I think he's doing a great job with Chelsea because I think Frank Lampard just couldn't choose the best number eleven or the best eleven. That, that's what I said when I did it with Marco. I said Thomas Tuchel and Chelsea that they're a little mm -hmm. overrated. I just but think, yeah. now now I'm gonna say they're a little 
And I feel like Thomas Tuchel's getting a lot of media attention, but he's he's pretty. I you think, know, he's, yeah. he's good. He's underrated right now. And so. I think another thing that's uh, playing a big role is that Thomas Tuchel had to deal with big personali personalities at PSG like Neymar and Mbappe. Oh, yeah. And I feel like Frank Lampard just had too much firepower. He didn't know what to do with it. Yep. All right, you go. Who do you think is more overrated or underrated? Mason Greenwood or uh, Kyle Saka? I think... Do you think... Which one do you think is more overrated and which one do you think is more underrated? Oh my well, gosh. <laughs> I guess. Um, I think Mason Greenwood is a lot more overrated. Especially really? since... I think so. Since last season. I mean, Saka right now, he's putting in work so he's getting the attention. He's bringing in goals and assists. Um, but... I think that I would definitely go uh, Saka as, as more underrated and Mason Greenwood. He's just a little a little overrated because he's kind of like Rashford when he broke out and then everyone was like, oh my gosh, like the next new talent. And that, we see that a lot, like yeah. oh, the next new talent and then they do good for one season and then kind of, the, this season he's not really, he's not the same player as last season. Could the media have been uh, the cause of it? Oh yeah, I think the, so. Uh, the cause I, of Mason Greenwood just yeah. hype, just flourishing because don't, so. don't get me wrong, he was... He was fantastic after uh, the league reopened after COVID. That's what I'm saying. He was but good. Then, he was good, but but then yeah, this season he's and he's not, it's not that he's playing bad this season. It's just he's not he's not as decisive in the final third as he was last year. Exactly the shots he would always he would bang a shot and it would go in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we got a special another special guest to be. <laughs> I guess a special another special guest Duke. All right, so we took we took the dog out. The lighting's gonna be a little different. <laughs> so if you hear him scratching, don't even mind. Don't trip. I want to talk about this is for this is for you, Eric. I know you'll be watching this later. Um, Federico Chiesa. Oh man, he's having a great. I think he's having a, a pretty good season this year. Um, now there was some hype about his from his move from Fiorentina, and at first in the beginning of the season he just wasn't you know he wasn't performing as well. But now he had two pretty solid legs against three goals, right? Yeah, three? against Porto. I believe I think it was three. All three, yes. And um, yeah, no, I think he's. He's gonna be a great player. He's underrated. All right. I, I think the same way. Like um, at Fiorentina, I, I I found him on FIFA when he was like 76 rated or whatever. Mm -hmm. He was like low rated. I was like, this guy is good. And then I saw him move to Juve, and I was like, hey, was that really the move? And then now he's he's flourishing. So I would say agree with you. Yep. Now you go hit me with. You can hit me Jimmy with whatever. Son. Oh, under. He's underrated. I think so. Yeah, he's a solid he's player. he's kind of like in Golo Kante. Like everyone just respects him. You know, he's yeah. not. He doesn't get like all the attention. He's not over here like you know a, sh mm -hmm. a show off or anything. He's a humble guy from what I've seen. Yeah, he's a humble guy and he proves it on the field. So I would say underrated. Hit me with a league or a tournament, whatever you want. It can be like the World Cup, Is, Euro. Anything. Uh, you do can, you think Europa League is overrated I'll or underrated? Ask you that. I think the Europa League. That's a tough one. I mean, because we don't see like the high quality teams in there. And you know, it's, it's more of like the the smaller teams that you know the smaller yeah. teams that play. Um, so I I personally don't really watch it. So I would say I don't know. I don't I don't have an answer to that. I mean, I, I can't say it's overrated because it doesn't get like the respect it deserves. But I wouldn't say that it's underrated because it you know it it, yeah. it is pretty good. Right. So what what do you say? Um. You know, I, I don't really rate Europa League, so I think it's overrated just because I feel like the teams that are in there are kind of like, they're not Champions League rejects, you know, but they're also like, there's for sure, a, there's a huge gap between the good teams and then, you know, the, the bad teams. But then, but then we see the, the example of Tottenham and, um, what team was it? The Slavia Prague or, or uh, Dynamo? The, from the Croatia team, yeah. right? The Croatian team, yeah, and they oh, yeah. just brought yeah. it back, so, you know. I yeah, know. that's true, That but... I mean, we go back again to that just Tottenham underperforming. I feel like they, That's true. you know, and whether we, all right, I guess that'll bring me up to my next question is, is Jose Mourinho overrated or underrated as a coach? Oh, um, I think he might, well, I mean, the, the stuff he's done makes him underrated, but the way he is and his hype, the hype around him, like, oh my gosh, we got Jose Mourinho, mm -hmm. but then he's been sacked so many times from so many clubs. So I would say he's a little overrated right I think, now. Yeah, I think his style of play is kind of being, it's just outdated, you know? Football is a lot, fast pace, uh, or a lot faster pace now, and I feel like just by sitting in and then counterattacking, you're just you're relying on the opponents to, to make mistakes instead of making them make mistakes. 
All right, and then I'll hit you with one last one. You can hit me. I think this is a really good one, but Jan, old luck. He's, he's not overrated at all. Yeah, thank you. He's, he's probably the best keeper in the world right now yeah. at the moment. Even though, I mean, even though maybe one of the goals that Chelsea scored, he could have blocked Which one? the CH one in the second leg. Oh, maybe he could have blocked that one. Um, but I just think he's well rounded. He's a well rounded keeper. All right, you hit me with the last one. It can be like I said, anything. Make it a good one. Vinicius. Oh, thank you. I was I wanted to ask you that one, but I was gonna save it for another one. Overrated. Um, I think he's a well overrated. They're kind of made him like the next Neymar yeah. type of thing, or mm -hmm. trying to fill in Ronaldo's spot. But he's 19, 20, yeah. and the way that he's getting praised right now for his, you know, he's not really proving himself on the field yet. So I would say right now he's overrated, but I think he has good potential, but he's a little high up right now. Yeah, I agree. Okay, okay, last bonus question. I know we said the last one was the last one, but bonus question. Um, you came up with it, Adonis. I'll let you hit me first. For sure. Um, do you think the England team is overrated or underrated? Ooh. England national team. Um, I think they are, excuse me, but... You know, I, I hope this doesn't hurt me in the future, but they're overrated. overrated. <laughs> they're overrated. They have so many good players mm -hmm. that they just don't reach. I mean, they reach the semis in the World Wait, Cup, but... They, they, I feel like it's always been like that with England, though. With yeah. Back in, like, 2006, they had, or 2000, Since like, 2004, before, they, you know, they had before. these the other players. They had David Beckham. They had Lampard. They had... Gerard. Gerard, uh, yeah. They had... Freaking they had, uh, Real Ferdinand, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, no, I think... That, and then right now, Jesse Lingard. Oh, okay. You know what? Screw the national team. Jesse Lingard, bro. Um, Wait, hold on. Honestly, because he left Man United, yeah. I want to since, hear you. Since he's left Man United, I could say... And I think this is also that he's playing a different role with West Ham, you know? Yeah. Compared to with United, the same thing with Slatan, you know? And I feel like West Ham United style of play fits Jesse Lingard better. That he, can, he doesn't have to defend too much. He can stay high up on the pitch and then... Whenever they have a counterattack, they can, you know, him and him and Antonio, they just take on, oh, they, they take on players. Oh, dang, you're exactly, that man. Dang. So I'm gonna say Justin Lingard right now at the moment is underrated. Heck yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, that concludes it. Thank you guys for watching. This is, like I said, part one of underrated, overrated. Please drop in the comments down below what you guys would like to see, what kind of questions you would like to see instead, and maybe who you would want to see next. I want to say thank you to Adonis yep. for coming over today right before work. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. subscribe. And share with your friends. And we'll catch you later. Peace.